Get a little bit of tongue tied there. Hi, Andy White. And what you are about to hear is the fusion of heart, mind, and soul. And I am sending powers and principalities into frothy fits of frenzy simply by being here. I guarantee you that. And I'm so glad that you are here with me as well. I am. I am streaming live over Facebook Live. If you're on uh, the Open Up the Doors Facebook page at Facebook.com slash FaithFM91.7. Uh, join in the conversation over at Facebook Live. I see some people are logging in right now. Thanks, thanks guys. I, I got, I got uh, friends listening from, from Arkansas, from, from Long Island, from Ohio, from all across the Fruited Plains. And I, 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 I just thank my, my listeners, my supporters, my friends. I, I really appreciate you all. Um, if you've, if, if you're, if you're a newcomer, we welcome you. You can email me at ajwhite777 at icloud.com. That's ajwhite777 at icloud.com if you would like to correspond with me and, uh, you know, about anything I, I might share on during the, broadcast if you're on facebook live shoot me some questions or, or or comments during the progression of the broadcast you know join into the conversation we are streaming if you're outside of the uh, fm uh, listening area the fm uh, you know broadcast area we are streaming on the internet at hamptonschristian.com that would be www.hamptonschristian.com if you're outside of the fm broadcast area as well the best way to listen to faith fm one more plug and i'll get on with it is to download the faith fm app you can listen to faith fm 24 7 with the free app for the android for the apple devices whatever your platform is and you can get that app for free there's a link off the hamptonschristian.com website before i get into stuff i do want to mention one thing our my, my uh, open up the doors video producer debbie whitma um she she uh, texted me earlier to say that she's been in the hospital all day with her mom today was her mom's birthday is her mom's birthday they were supposed to be uh going out for the day enjoying the day enjoying the the you know her birthday and she woke up this morning with uh some some leg pain and they've been in the hospital taking x-rays and mris all day and i just want to uh send out the our thoughts and prayers to debbie whitmer she's she's a faithful she's a faithful faithful friend again she is open up the doors video producer i was not even expecting her to to be on the program today i think she she uh i think she you know poked in for a moment but uh debbie our hearts and our prayers are out for you and your mom and i just wanted to make mention of that uh i know a lot of people here to tune in regularly on facebook live they know who you are and uh and i just wanted to get that out there so so that y- your mom and you and your family could be in prayer hopefully whatever is ailing your mom will be something uh you know minor and it'll go away in jesus's name all right i want to get on with the broadcast here last week 
Last week, we began to take a look into Xi Jinping, who's the president of China. And on the broadcast last week, I said what I asked the question, what is China up to? And I want to continue along the lines of of, of talking about China. It's something that I haven't really spoken much about at all in these past several years of Open Up the Doors. We've been focusing more on, uh, you know, Local, you know, state, statewide cultural events and issues, as well as, you know, Turkey. I'm, I'm always watching out for Erdogan and Turkey and, and, and these sorts of things. But I, uh, the last few weeks, I've been, I, last few weeks, I've been turning my attention to China because there's a lot of stuff going on that was kind of flying under the radar, at least flying under my radar. And so we're going to continue along those veins. What is China up to? Well, what they are up to. Whether they are cognizant of it or not, is that they are forging ahead. Along with Russia, they are preparing the way of the kings of the East. And that's what I want to talk to you all about today. I want to lay out the biblical framework as I see it regarding the kings of the East. And one thing I want to get to right away, because I was a, I was kind of equivocating on it last week. I, I mentioned last week about some of the Stan countries. You know those countries, Kaz, uh, Kazakhstan and uh, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. And I kind of uh, lightly went over them last week, saying I wasn't really sure about about them being in 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 with the kings of the East. They're all there. They're Muslim con- countries. And I was kind of, uh, admittedly, last week I was kind of like I said, equivocating on it, because you've got these, these group of Muslim nations that, that are kind of snugged in between Russia and China. Uh, again, ca- uh, Kazakhstan and U- Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Tajikistan. Well, I take back my equivocation from last week. I take it back, because as I've been doing more research and doing my homework, lo and behold, since last week, I've come to find something out that I never knew before, and I'm going to share that with you right now. I've come to find out that there is indeed already an alliance that I was not aware of until this past week. That's why we've got to be constantly in the word, folks. Not only the word, but, but comparing, comparing the word to, to what's going on geopolitically in the world around us. I really believe that. I mean, we just don't know everything, but if we do our homework, God opens up doors and and gives us more insight and i I stumbled upon this and it's blowing me away because i did not know that this alliance existed but there is an alliance that exists it's called the shanghai cooperative organization and folks this is huge maybe some of you have already heard of it hey i'm just getting on board i just discovered this military alliance and it's huge and it brings a lot of things into focus The Shanghai Cooperation Organization is a political, military, and economic alliance that consists right now of eight member states. And there are a few more waiting in the wings that want to join. Uh, Pakistan wants to join. Afghanistan wants to join. But the, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization was established back on April 26, 1996 as the Shanghai Five. Again, I never heard of it before, but it exists and they're moving forward with an agenda, which I'll get into in a moment. But the Shanghai Five uh, began with the signing of what they call the Treaty, the Treaty on Deepening Military Trust in Border Regions. It was signed in Shanghai by the heads of the of the five founding members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Do you want to know who those five founding members are? Well, I'm going to tell you whether you want to know or not, because it's quite interesting and it's completely um, it's be- it has already begun to completely make me, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, recalibrate some of my thinking with some things. But the original Shanghai Five that, that signed the original treaty on deepening military trust was obviously China. It was uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan. It's hard to say some of these words with K's. Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan. Tajikistan, and you ready for this, folks? Russia. Russia was a founding member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization with China. There are eight, that was the original five, as I said, but now there are eight. Who are the current members? Uh, Pakistan. Oh, a moment ago I said Pakistan was waiting to, to come in. No, actually I meant, I meant um, Afghanistan 
and uh, there's another stand country I can't think of right now. But right now, as I, as it stands right now, there are stand as it stands right now. No pun intended. As it stands right now, these are the eight current members: China, obviously, Pakistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and India just joined last year, and as in Russia, as I as I just mentioned, is the current standing of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And as an interesting little side note, I've discovered this in my in my research this week. Back in 2005, Bible teacher Chuck Mislub, I know a lot of you probably have heard of Chuck Mislub, he's a pretty, pretty well-known end times Bible teacher. But back in 2005, Chuck Mislub uh, wrote an article entitled, An Overlooked King of the East, which I read this past week. But he wrote it back in 2005. And the overlooked king of the East that he wrote about was India. Missler wrote in that article, quote, with all the spotlights singling out China, there is another overlooked giant rising in the East, India. Like I said, Chuck Missler wrote that back in 2005. Last year, in 2017, June of last year, India became an official member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Friends, this is, in my humble opinion, the formation of the kings of the East. Now, again, I need to keep hammering away at something here because I know that it's so overwhelmingly prevalent. What is so overwhelmingly prevalent and I need to keep hammering away at? I realize a lot of folks have been inculcated with the idea that Russia is Magog. If you've been listening to this show for any length of time, you know by now that I do not believe in any way, shape, or form that Russia is Magog. However, I understand that a lot of people do believe that. But Magog, regarding the historical biblical record, and not what modern day teachers have postulated, but before the 20th century, every single uh, biblical encyclopedia uh, showed that Magog was never associated with any other geographical area other than Asia Minor, which is now modern day Turkey, of course. So I've been I've, I've held to a long I've held for a long time for a very long time that when we when people start talking about Magog being Russia, there it's a complete misdirect. And I'll keep saying it because I know it's such it's so prevalent, and I'm going to just put keep putting it out there into the ethos: Russia is not Magog, because if you study this this, this thing out and compare it to what is actually happening right now, geopolitically, geomilitarily, military alliance-wise, Russia is indeed far more aligned with and in line with being part of the kings of the East than it is with Magog. Now, I know that's going to blow a lot of people's whole apple cart. It's, going to, it's just going to turn over their apple cart. It's going to set up their, it's going to set up their, their, their ducks. We all, like to, we all like to have our ducks in order. But I'm telling you right now, in my humble opinion, you don't have to agree with me, but this is how I'm seeing it. And trust me, folks, I've been studying this out and studying this out and searching this out and searching this out and comparing it with Scripture. Russia is far more aligned with the kings of the East than it is with Magog. And that analysis comports with my understanding of Daniel 11.44, which is what I shared last week out of Daniel. When, 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 when the king of the north, who is the Antichrist, is at war with the king of the south, who is Egypt, and he hears in Daniel 11.44, he hears news from the north and from the east. I don't want to reiterate what I shared last week regarding that. But the Antichrist goes out with rage and fury because he hears bad news from the north and the east, which I see as being Russia and China, personally. Now, hear me out, folks. Right now, as I speak, Russia next month is preparing for its biggest war games in 40 years in a show of force that will involve for the first time ever China and Mongolia they are getting ready right now for a military exercise called Vostok 2018 the the Russian defense minister Sergei Shoigoi if that's how you say his last name Sergei I can pronounce his last name it looks like sh- Shogu. <laughs> anyway, 
He's the Russian defense minister. The, the, Rush, the Russian defense minister, Sergei, I just call him by his first name. I can pronounce his first name. Sergei was quoted as saying that this is going to be the, the biggest and largest war game in 40 years. Now, here's what's interesting. This exercise, this, this Russian military, Rush, joint military operation with China and with Mongolia, as I said a moment ago, it's called Vostok 2018. Do you know what Vostok is in Russian? East. This is called East 2018. Now, listen, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, make more of something. I really don't want to make more of something than what it is. But I can't, I can't allow it to get by us that, that they're having a – that the kings of the East are having a war, exercise, a war game exercise called East. I, I just think that's, that's just interesting if nothing else. It's going to take place. These Russian military exercises next month are going to take place in central and eastern Russian military districts. Again, it's going to be the largest they've had in four decades. 300,000 troops, just the Russian troops. This isn't counting – what what China's going to be sending in Mongolia. 300,000 Russian troops, 1,000 military aircraft, two of Russia's naval fleets, and all all of its airborne units, agencies, uh, uh, the Russian Defense Minister Sergoy has stated. Here's something else for the first time ever. The joint Russia and China military exercise will include simulated nuclear weapons attacks. And oddly enough, I hope everybody's sitting down right now. If you're driving, you might want to pull over. Because oddly enough, these this joint Russian-Chinese-Mongolian military exercise where they will be practicing the use of nuclear weapons is scheduled to begin on September 11th and go through the 15th. I mean... Do you think that's just a coincidence that Russia and China chose September 11th to hold the largest military war game in four decades? I don't know. Maybe it's just a coincidence. I don't know. But something tells me it's not. Something tells me they're trying to send a message, that they want to send a message. The... Communist Party affiliated Global Times newspaper reported this past week that Vostok 18 is the first time Chinese troops have taken part in this strategic exercise and shows the deepening strategic partnership between Moscow and Beijing. Chinese troops participating in the Russian military drill shows that the China-Russia Comprehensive Strategic Partnership of Coordination is further deepening in the military and security fields. This is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. The Chinese, by the way, this is going to begin on September 11th, but right now, Chinese forces are right now involved in another military exercise being held by the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So the, so right now they they, they are practi- they're practicing their 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 warfare with these other nations, you know, Kaza- uh, Taj- Tajikistan, Uzbekistan and all these other stand countries and it's eye opening. I shared a scripture last week. Revelation 16. The sixth angel pulled out his bowl in the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Folks, to me, it's clear as can be, personally, that the kings of the east is this Chinese-Russian-led coalition that will take advantage of the removal of a natural barrier, as the scripture says, and sweep westward in the, in the, in the final days of the tribulation that we read about in Revelation 16, when they will meet up with with the forces of the Antichrist, as we read in Daniel 11. The Bible says the Euphrates River will be dried up, allowing the kings from the east to march toward Israel, to meet up and, and in my view, contend with the king of the north. Because I do believe that Daniel 11.44 plays into this. And here's an interesting note. We, we, we often say, we often realize, many of us uh, who, who are involved in prophecy, that, that scriptural prophecy usually has very many times, very often, there's a dual fulfillment. I can't get into all of that right now. But there's always a near-term f- fulfillment of biblical prophecy and a, and a long-term final fulfillment. And here's an interesting note about this drying up of the Euphrates. According to Herodotus, who was 
uh, one of the really Herodotus is called the father of historians. He was an ancient historian, a Greek. But according to Herodotus, Babylon, the original Babylon, was overthrown when Cyrus diverted the Euphrates River, allowing the Persians to wade into the sea unexpected. That's in the historical reference. And this could be what Jeremiah, uh, uh, this might be the near-term reference. In Jeremiah 50, uh, 50 uh, chapter 50, verse 38, talking about the destruction of Babylon, Jeremiah says this, a drought is against her waters. Babylon was built on the Euphrates, of course. And Jeremiah prophesied, a drought is against her waters, and they will be dried up. Now, most historians will say, well, that's what, that's what Cyrus did when he, when he conquered Babylon. But again, dual fulfillment. This may also may be speaking of the ultimate day of the Lord drying up the Euphrates as described in Revelation 16. The bottom line is this. The bottom line is this, folks. Russia and China are spearheading the emergence of an Asian power bloc that will ultimately be destroyed at the Battle of Armageddon. But before Armageddon happens, the kings of the East just may be planning out some other really nasty things. This past January, after the new American defense budget was passed, Pentagon Comptroller David Nerquist, when he was releasing the Pentagon's $686 billion budget for, for this past January, said this, quote, Great power competition, not terrorism, has emerged as the central challenge to U.S. security and prosperity. It is increasingly apparent that China and Russia want to shape a world consistent with their authoritarian values and in the process replace the free and open order that has enabled global security and prosperity since World War II. To put that into a, into a biblical framework, friends, The kings of the East are presently engaged in preparations so that the way of the kings of the East might be prepared. Yeah, I know, that was a mouthful. But I'll be back with more. Stick around, folks. I'm going to take a break. Awake, Awake, my soul, the ember days. That's certainly a great tune and a great prayer as well. Welcome back. Andy White, you are listening to open up the doors here on Faith FM, WEGB 90.7 and 93.3 Napig, WEGQ 91.7 in Quag, going over the FM airwaves. I am also, if you're just joining in, uh, Facebook living on my off my Open Up the Doors Facebook page at facebook.com slash faithfm91.7. So go on over to my Open Up the Doors Facebook page. If you've never liked the page, please, please, please like the page. And for those of you over on Facebook, please, please, please share this stream into your streams. It really helps defeat, <laughs> defeat the... Uh, the censorship algorithms of Facebook, something that we probably should get into a little bit more. I'm going to be talking about some algorithms as well in a moment that China's doing. But I want to continue with my my rant, if you will, against China, the kings of the East. But but this is serious stuff, man. I'm, I'm telling you, I read a bunch of uh, this past week, past couple of days, I, I, I read a, a bunch of military uh, articles uh, out of Military Times magazine, uh, Defense magazine. And I said to my wife last night, I looked at her and I said, wow, I'm reading all this stuff put, put, now, put out and reading these quotes by our military leaders and our g- generals and what they're saying and uh, what they're talking about. And I looked at her and I said, stock up, <laughs> stock, we got we to gotta restock the pantry. This stuff can get you paranoid. This stuff can get you worried. I'm not paranoid and I'm not worried because I know where we're going. I read the end of the book. I've read the whole book and I know where it's all going. I have joy and hope and confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Doesn't mean we don't prepare in the natural, but um, stuff's going down, folks, because here's the question at hand. Is China preparing for war against the U.S.? And the unequivocal answer is yes. It's an unequivocal yes that China is indeed preparing for war against the U.S., as well as Russia. They're doing it next month on September 11th. Our military leaders, this is going to get a little bit depressing. I don't want to get depressing, but I'm going to tell you what's, what's out there. This is the truth. It's what this broadcast is all about. Not hiding, not hiding our heads in the sand, but speaking the truth and speaking it in love and laying it out there. But about a year ago, our military leaders 
would testify before a special uh, congressional committee on military readiness. And this was this was being uh, shown on, on C-SPAN for all the world to see. And these military leaders were laying out, quite frankly, the sad state of, a, of affairs of our defense capabilities for all the world to see. Because the previous administration, the Barack Obama administration, really, really seriously undermined and weakened our forces. And thank God we're, 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 we're revamping them. Thank God we've, we've passed a, a huge budget. But we've got a lot of catching up to do, folks. And it was less than a year ago that our military, this is what, a year ago was about a year into Donald Trump's administration. Let me read to you some of the statements that our military leaders were, were making to Congress. Quote, China is building a huge navy. That would be huge. A huge navy. A bigly navy. No, that, Donald Trump didn't say that. Our military leaders have said that. China is building a huge navy. Our planes are old and out of date. Our enemies know all this. And now you know this. Now the whole world knows it because it was on C-SPAN. According to these military leaders, many units would take up to 30 days to be ready to respond to a serious attack. Up to 30 days to respond. The enemy probably won't give us 30 days to respond. These are quotes. We have let our military shrink to below minimum standards. We must reverse this immediately to restore our capability in eight years minimum. Our Navy is smaller than it has been in 99 years. Half our fighter jets and planes are out of service or in repair. They are are also an average of 24 years old, flying thousands of hours more than they they were designed for. We are down thousands of fighter pilots. I actually read this article just a few months ago that we have a real shortage of, of, you know, Top Gun fighter pilots. We're down thousands of fighter pilots with less than the minimum time required just to stay current, not to mention good pilots. We are down 3,000 service techs to fix them in an already small force. If we don't keep experienced pilots, missions fail, planes crash, civilians and military people die. Now, granted, these quotes were from, from about a year ago. We've been turning the corner. We've been trying to fix this. But this was the public testimony just a year ago. This past week, to bring it to bring it into more recent times. In fact, it was this week in Military Times magazine. Air Force General Terrace O'Shaughnessy ended a speech at the 140th National Guard Association conference in New Orleans last weekend with a warning that the era of great power competition doesn't leave the U.S. mainland home, our home, uncontested. Here's a quote, just from last weekend: "The U.S. homeland." is no longer a sanctuary, according to this four-star general who was in charge both of U.S. Northern Command and North American Aerospace Defense Command. He said that peer-level adversaries, when, when you hear these terms in the military called peer-level adversaries, they're referring to China, Russia, primarily. But peer-level adversaries are probing U.S. defenses in multiple domains, and the continental United States is well within their sights. O'Shaughnessy said, we're in a changing security environment. We used to think about the sanctuary we had with the oceans and friendly countries to our north and to our south, but that's changing with adversaries that are actually able to reach out and touch us now. In another article this week, Defense News Magazine, the, 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 the article was titled this, The Pentagon is planning for a war with China and Russia, but can it handle both? The Pentagon is in the opening stages of, quote, redesigning the force around the challenges of, guess who? Russia and China, the kings of the East. The department's number two uniform official said this past Tuesday, while warning that America may not be able to afford preparing for two unique problem sets. And um, he goes on to say that that the, the difference is the way we'd have to fight China. I'm going to try and, 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 and encapsulate this for the sake of, of time. But in this report, the, the, he was saying that the way we need to fight China is different than the way we need to fight Russia. And it's going to stretch our abilities and our, our pocketbooks. And some of it is overlapping, but it's not the same thing. He says that any fight with China, if it were to come to blows, would be largely a maritime and air fight. The Russian problem is set largely an air and ground fight. 
And we've got to be able to do it all at the same time. Which means it's going to be, uh, he says here, uh, let, me, let me go through this here. But let me wrap it up. Basically, he's saying that that you know it's 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 going to be tough, and we need, we need money. We need to we need to bolster our 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 defenses, and we need to get back into the game because China and Russia have surpassed us with some modern day equipment. Another article this past week, the Washington Times reported. This was just the other day that we have brought back the second fleet out of mothballs because of the increasingly aggressive Russian military around the world. And I would include the Chinese into that as well. Admiral John uh, John M. Richardson, Chief of Naval Operations, made this chilling statement this past week aboard a ceremony that brought back the Second Fleet. The Second Fleet was in mothballs for the last 10 years, and we've just recommissioned it. And this admiral at this recommissioning ceremony said this, you get a sense of the gravity of of this moment that's chilling you get a sense of the gravity of this moment as I said a moment ago folks the Russian military on September 11th next month is doing exercises both with China and Mongolia they're testing out new equipment and if all that wasn't enough what's going on on the civil level What's going on on the civil level in China is, an, is, is absolutely dystopian. One of the things that China wants to become a world leader in, and they are pretty much there, is AI. AI is one of the growing disciplines in which experts say China is making quick process. Uh, recently, a Microsoft executive said, quote, China will lead the world in producing AI hardware. Eric Schmidt CEO of Google uh, parent company Alphabet this past week he was a chairman of the he was a chairman of the Pentagon's defense in, in, innovation board said the U, the US needs to get our act together regarding AI in military applications if it doesn't want to fall behind on technology that could determine the future of both the defense and commercial sectors in 2016, Beijing released a formal AI strategy, which Schmidt said should set alarm bells ringing in America. Here is what Eric Schmidt, C- CEO of, of, of this company that owns Google, said this. It's pretty simple. By 2020, they will have caught up. Actually, they already have. This is an old quote. By 2025, they will be better than us. By 2030, they will dominate. Speaking about the Chinese dominating in the industries of AI. And he said Beijing is on track to meet that. And like I said, this is actually an old quote. They've already surpassed it. They're surpassing their, their own their own quotas. And Google, because they're just in it for the money. You got to wonder sometimes, you know, I, 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 well, I won't go down that road. But Google appears to be putting its money where Schmidt's mouth was because Google announced back in December that it was opening an AI center where in L.A., in Silicon Valley. No, Google is opening an, an AI center in Beijing. Let that sink in. Yes, folks, Google has been snuggling up to the chai comms for quite a while now, by the way. The things that are going on in China are, are, are truly amazing. I don't know if I have the time to go through them all. But I've been reading stories such as the fact that uh, face recognition. China has over 200 million cameras across the country in the major cities. 200 million cameras. And they are doing facial recognition on everybody walking the streets. The Chinese uh, police, it's the ultimate police state going on in China right now. Xi Jinping launched a major upgrade of the Chinese surveillance state as he's been in power. And China has become the world's biggest market for security and surveillance technology. I bet you that security and su- surveillance technology, I, I will guarantee you, I will bet you that this is the technology that will be used in the beast kingdom. They'll probably buy it from China. They'll probably have the Chinese install it in the kingdom of the beast. The New York Times put out an article. It, it, it's just amazing. The, the police... I'm trying to condense this because there's so much here that I want to just, I want to inform you. I want, I want this audience to be informed. I want this audience to know what's going on. 
because this this stuff that's going on is prophetic. This stuff that's going on isn't being reported really that much in the mainstream media. Although the New York Times has done a couple of good, you know, I usually don't like the New York Times, but they've actually done a couple of really good articles on what's going on in China. In this one article, let me read some of this out of the New York Times. In the Chinese city of Zengu, a police officer, police officer wearing facial recognition glasses, spotted a heroin smuggler at a train station. In another city in, in China, cameras powered by artificial intelligence helped the police snatch two dozen criminal suspects in the midst of a big annual festival. In a city called Wuhu, a fugitive murder suspect was identified by a camera as he bought food from a street vendor. With millions of cameras, 200 million by the way, 200 million cameras and billions of lines of code, China is building a high-tech authoritarian future. It's, it's the, it's shame, shame is the game in China. The Chinese are trying to, not trying, they're succeeding, they are suppressing and oppressing their 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 populace by shaming them billboard size displays if you if you jaywalk if you jaywalk a street there's a billboard size display that shows the face of jaywalkers and the list of names of people who don't pay their debts you got something about the chinese the chinese are a very proud people and they're always one of the things about china is this this saying about saving face they always want to save face so the Chinese authorities, knowing this very uh, innate nature of the Chinese people, will, 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 sh- will shame them into compliance through AI, through, through AI and through uh, facial recognition. China combines data and the use of AI to rate the loyalty of its citizens to the state and uses these ratings to determine jobs and more in their society. This is potentially, and I would say more than potentially because it's already happening. This is a new way for a government to manage the economy and society. The goal, the goal is algorithmic governance, which is really the very same things that will be instituted in the kingdom of the beast that we read about in Revelation 13. But it's coming about through Chinese technology and through Chinese innovation. I shouldn't say completely innovation because a lot of the stuff that they're doing, they've, they've stolen and robbed from other governments. But that's, that's for, for another discussion for another day. I got to take a break. Stick around. I'll be back in a moment. The Fusion of Heart, Mind, and Soul. This is Open Up the Doors with Andy White here on Faith FM. WEGB 90.7 and 93.3. Nat Peak and WEGQ 91.7 in Quad. Thanks for hanging out with me on this summer day, folks, all across the Fruited Plain. I am streaming live on Facebook Live. If you're just joining me, you can... Go on, go on over to the Open Up the Doors Facebook page at facebook.com slash faithfm91.7 and join in the conversation over there. And someone uh, someone just made an interesting comment. Well, actually, that someone was my wife. But she made a comment that I think is uh, worth repeating here. She said on Facebook Live, so basically, instead of having the Bible in Chinese society – and the morals that come with it, they have replaced it with AI, and that's what they're that's what they are doing basically. You know, they're, they're shutting. I shared last week how they're how they're shutting down churches, how they're persecuting the churches, how they're how they're arresting people who have Bibles, but uh, to have them comport and conform to their society, they'll shame them, as I just mentioned publicly, with this facial recognition, which is everywhere. Can you imagine your face popping up on a giant billboard in Times Square? Uh, saying that you didn't pay, you know, this month's uh, visa bill or something. That's what they're doing. Literally, that's what they're doing. Uh, shaming them, shaming them into compliance to control them. You know, it says in Revelation. I need to read this scripture. I read it last week, but I, I want to bring it back by way of reminder because it, it pertains to this very thing about the kings of the east in context. It says in Revelation, I saw three unclean. Sp- Spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now, we know that's the Antichrist kingdom. 
But here's what they're doing. For they are spirits of demons performing signs. Here's the key. Which go out to the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them together for the battle of the great day of God Almighty. And Revelation 16, 16 says, and they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew, Amgeddon. As we know, folks, this passage of scripture is one of many that speaks of that final climatic conflict known as the Battle of Armageddon, where the Antichrist armies, as well as the kings of the East, will be destroyed by the return of Jesus Christ. And I was thinking, I've often wondered this, why is China involved in the Battle of Armageddon? When the battle, when, when it's all centered around Israel, what, what, what is China's involvement in the Battle of Armageddon? Well, there's a couple of things, but... God throughout the scriptures talks about gathering the nations together for the day of judgment. In Joel, he says, let the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. And Zephaniah, the prophet said this, well, God said this through Zephaniah, my determination, God is determined. It's to gather the nations to my assembly of kingdoms, to pour on them my indignation, all my fierce anger, and all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. When this force of the kings of the east engages with the armies of the Antichrist, as I shared last week, they're in conflict with one another. They're warring with one another, if you read through Daniel 11. But during this time, in the final moments of the great tribulation, when the seventh and final bowl judgment will be poured out, Jesus returns in the midst of this conflagration. And these warring factions that are fighting with each each other, they turn their attention to fight against Jesus. In the midst of them fighting with each other and trampling Israel underfoot, In the process, Jesus returns to pour out the wrath of God upon them. It says in Revelation 19, 19, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Jesus is returning. And then as as, as the Lord Jesus returns and all the forces of the Antichrist and all the forces of the kings of the east will be destroyed. But before that day comes... Because that's where it's going to end up. But there's going to be much more trouble and tribulations ahead. But I was saying, Lord, why specifically the kings of the East? You've got this whole Muslim contingency. When you start talking about Kazakhstan and, 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 and you know, uh, Uzbekistan, and the, all these stand countries, they're Muslim. China is atheistic. And I, and I felt one of the things that hit my spirit the other day was China's one-child policy. We talk about how America is going to be judged for the, for the 60 million aborted babies here. Do you know how many millions of babies have, it, have been aborted in China? China has had a one-child policy for decades. China has murdered countless millions of innocents. In fact, China right now has a woman problem. They've killed so many women that they have too many men. The, the, the male-to-female ratio is out of whack in China. They're trying to import women because they've, they've aborted so many female babies. My friends, I want to tell you something. God has, has and always will judge a nation for the shedding of innocent blood. And China is no exception. And I believe China's judgment on the shedding of innocent blood will come at the Battle of Armageddon. That's one of the reasons I think God is drawing them out. You look what it said in the scripture. I just read it. These, these, these demon spirits, these lying spirits go out to the kings of the earth. And in the context of, of Revelation 16, it's talking about the kings of the east in particular. And it says it's, it's going out to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. God is, is, is calling them out just like he does with, 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 with the Magog Confederacy. He says in Ezekiel 38, uh, Uh, regarding the Magog Confederacy, I will put a hook in your mouth and draw you to the mountains of Israel where I will destroy you. I happen to believe that 
and I, it's been a, it's been a journey here. I'm going to just throw this out there because I know a lot of people. We have all kinds of different views and opinions regarding when is the when is the the, the Ezekiel 38:39 battle of of Magog. Um, I've evolved in that through the years of, as I studied out. I've come to finally see that it probably really is just another name for the battle of Armageddon. It's just another name for for. What's going to happen in the Valley of Jehoshaphat when God has called out all the nations of, 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 of the, the Antichrist nations and the kings of the east, and he's going to gather them together. He's calling them out for the day of judgment in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, as I just read. And that's all coming. But, and here's the big but, before that day comes, there's going to be much trouble and tribulations ahead. China, from all accounts, as I've been sharing these past couple of weeks, is a serious threat. And something I was thinking about the past couple of weeks, as we pursue as Americans, as America, as American policy, I should say, Donald Trump's policy. I, I, I've been, I've been, I've been in favor of a lot of the things Donald Trump's been doing policy-wise. I think he's been really good in a lot of policy. One thing that's got me concerned, and I've said this, and I've been consistent with it, is the the sanctions and the tariffs. Because here's a fact of history. We could be playing with fire with these sanctions on Russia. We've got sanctions on Russia. We've got we've got sanctions. We've got tariffs on on uh, China, which amounts to the same thing as sanctions. We've got sanctions on Turkey. We've got sanctions on Iran. All of these nations have something in common. They're all last days, biblical, prophetic nations. But here's the thing. Japan's surprise attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, was in part a response to years of economic warfare by the U.S. against Japan. In the four years leading up to Pearl Harbor, the U.S. implemented ever more restrictive trade measures on Japan, including embargoes on much-needed oil, gasoline, scrap metal, and froze Japanese assets. The trade war birth a literal war. And as I said a moment ago, we have currently sanctions against Russia, Iran, Turkey, China. What will like to fuse, my friends? I'm just laying this out there. What will light the fuse? What will be the proverbial straw that breaks the camel's back? How much time does America have? How long will our enemies give us to recoup? They know that we've been weakened militarily, as I shared in the last block. They know that, 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 that we're playing catch-up in, in a lot of ways right now. The only time will tell, of course, but folks, hear me out. I'm not doing the fear-mongering thing. You need to understand this. I'm not the little boy who cried wolf, but our military leaders, our military commanders behind closed doors, they are clearly worried. About two weeks ago, the BBC reported a mysterious Russian satellite displaying very abnormal behavior up, you know, orbiting around. And it's raised alarm in the U.S., according to a State Department official. We don't know what this satellite is, and it's doing some odd things, and there's no way to verify what it is. This State Department official voiced fears that it was impossible to say if the object may be a weapon. Russia has dismissed the comments, of course, as unfounded slanderous accusations, blah, 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 blah. But the Russians are up to something. The Chinese are up to something. They're, they're practicing nuclear attacks next week or in two weeks. China is now capable of controlling the South China Sea in all scenarios short of war with the United States, the commander of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, Adam Philip S. Davidson, has said. He has described China as a peer competitor, gaining on the United States and surpassing us in some, some critical areas. They're surpassing us with asymmetrical capabilities, including anti-ship missiles and submarine warfare and hypersonic missiles. I'm running out of time. I want to close with this before I do run out of time. I said, I said a year ago that I believe China and Russia wants to lure us into a trap. They were hoping that we would launch a first strike against North Korea last year, thereby giving them an excuse to retaliate. That has been adverted, at least for the moment, it seems anyway. 
So what are they planning next? I don't know personally. But I would not rule out a surprise Pearl Harbor type attack in any case. I wouldn't rule it out, folks. And as I've been pleading with this audience for several years now, here's the thing. Be prepared. Be prepared both spiritually and naturally. Be prepared in the best way that you can be prepared. That's my plea for you. If and when, if and when, a crisis or calamity befalls this nation, have some basic survival things stored up. A food supply, extra food, a generator, gas, propane, and storage so that you can get through a few weeks or months if need be. No, it's not going to be easy. easy. It's not going to be pretty. And depending on where you are in this country, it may be completely futile. I'll grant you that. Which is why I say this. No matter what happens, the most important thing, friends, is to be ready spiritually. Maintain your hope. Maintain your joy in the Lord, come what may. I know that I've laid out some pretty scary scenarios here, and I've only laid it out in part. I've got a lot of things bubbling up inside of me that I've been reticent to share. But I hope this has helped to inform you. I hope this has helped to encourage you. And I'm out of time, and i got to go. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Have a great week, everybody. These hours always go so fast. I'll be back next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. But keep it right here on Faith FM. There's some great preacher programming still to come up. God bless everybody.